Here we go. <laughs> Still rolling, yeah? And then when they needed to rumble over. Oh no, Aka, oh no. Aka Aka no. It's like a brick with eyeballs and a beard and an attitude problem. I like him. <laughs> big hairy brick. I did. That was. Big hairy. Yeah. I mean, okay. He's been called all sorts this season. If you're not a fan, you're probably a sociopath and we wouldn't get on. Anyway, the match. Is that too much? That's <laughs> good. Hello and welcome to Gallagher Premiership Rugby's The Lowdown. Uh, I'm Flats, he's Topsy. Hi Topsy. Hey Flats. Hi. Uh, we've got a really interesting chat coming up in a little while. Wait till you hear it. Um, there's lots of action happening at the top of the league. We're going to talk a little bit about the bottom of the league, kind of structure of the Premiership. Not quite as formal and boring as it sounds, hopefully. Uh, but round 25 was an amazing weekend's action. Again, yeah, Kelsey Bruce. Really good. Here's what's coming up. There were two games on Friday night. Bristol against Chiefs, Wasps against Sale. And on Saturday, three three o'clock kickoffs: Bath against Irish, Quinns, Gloucester, and Newcastle, Leicester. And at half past five on Saturday was Sarries against the Northampton Saints. Right, time for those calculators. At the start of the weekend, as low as ninth, Wasps still mathematically had a chance of making that top four. But you can see how tight that group is. Spearheaded by Saints, Gloucester, Chiefs, Sale, Irish. It's going to be a fantastic race. Right, we're going to do both Friday night games now. Bristol against Exeter at Ashton Gate. Exeter desperate to win to keep their top four hopes alive. Then we're going to go to Coventry to the CBS Stadium for Wasps against Sale, both of whom still mathematically, this is right, isn't it, had a chance of making the top yeah, four. That is correct. That is correct. Calculator, see, you're on it as well today. Um, yeah, still mm. mathematically in with a shot. Realistic, we're not sure, but the one thing for Sale, they could guarantee Champions Cup with a win because the gap between them and Wasps would be too big, so a big night for them. There's hope. There's Always hope. hope. There's hope. We're going to start in Bristol, mind. Bristol still down a man. Viewers. There it is for Townsend again, missing out Johnny Gray. Just a bend backwards, and Frecker is in. He's being chased by Slade, but it is an uneven contest. What a score from Toby Fricker. He does have this habit of scoring tries when they're needed. We've got to open our eyes and we've got to be open to moving on because it, it doesn't always feel like we are. But we, no, things, results like today, slipping down the table, they kind of prove that, that we've all got to, like I say, open our eyes and take, take individual responsibility and move on. De Prier to the Prier, who's not backwards but picked up again, and the try for Akka van der Merwe. On the line. And the little bearded warthog burrows under the defence to score a big try for Sale. I love the last five, six minutes how they're stuck in and fought for each other. There's four lads who are leaving there, so it shows how much each of them mean to each other, uh, as much as the result, because that puts us in, into Europe and we're. Exit to losing today. There's an outside chance, a very slim chance, but an outside chance of playoffs, which we're still, we're still striving for. So Alex Arneson, happy enough. We're going to come to Sale in a sec, but first Ashton Gate, Topsy Bristol, uh, not a lot to play for, but they did play some lovely stuff. Charles Piatow off the left, beautiful step. Very Harry nice, Randall, they did nice. play some nice stuff, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and they, they kind of showed the Bristol that we know is there, just haven't seen it consistently through the year. But it was a nice way to sign up for them at home, in front of their crowd. Some lovely, lovely tries. The Leo try as well mm. from Sheedy's flick, very, very nice. So a good way for them to wrap up at home, and they'll know they can come again next season. But yeah, a bit too inconsistent through the year. Yeah, it was, and next to the Chiefs, they needed to win that really to keep the hose eyes. After this game there, they're all but done and dusted for top four, and it feels like there's a bit of a, a rebuild needed down in Exeter, doesn't it? So if you're going to rebuild that team, where do you start? Big question, but... It is, it is, and like I said, they've had a tough, inconsistent year. We know there's been issues at Tens with Simmons and Skinner, who's our main guy, and that sometimes happens, and maybe when they've been at the top seat for so, so long in so many finals consistently, Maybe they've just needed a year to say, right, OK, it's not gone our way. Let's reset, let's recharge, rebuild, come again stronger. It's not always a bad thing. Right, up to Coventry. Was couldn't get it done. But the game, less beautiful on the eye uh, to the casual observer, admittedly. But there were elements within that Sale Sharks performance which were really impressive. Beautiful in a different way. Yeah, it? different way, but very Sale, very Alex Anderson. When times get tough... When they need to dig in, their pack roll their sleeves up. They all roll their sleeves up, actually, 1-15. to 15. Set piece stood up, was immense, you know, really got them back into the game. 
kick their penalty as well. Dupree was on point with his boot as well. And then when they needed to rumble over, Van der Merwe gets that try, and that is huge. And so at this stage of the season, you just got to win. Got to win those games, got to rack up those points, got to give yourselves a chance. They move up to 65 now, home game next weekend to finish off the regular season. So they'll back themselves, no doubt about it. Akka van der Merwe is great, isn't he? A unit, you know, absolute he, unit. He's like a big brick with eyeballs and a beard. Yeah, I'll take that. And an attitude problem. Yeah. I like him, I like him a lot. We're going to Twickenham for the first of three three o'clock kickoffs on Saturday. Quinns against Gloucester. Gloucester wanted to win, of course, to stay in the fight for the playoffs. Quinns wanted to win to guarantee, guarantee themselves a playoff semi-final, right? But that wasn't the main event. Put the maths aside and the permutations aside. The main event was Craig David performing live before kickoff. You a Amazing. Fan? Big fan, big fan. Twickenham, Sunshine, Craig David, re rewind. Yeah, I can't imagine people not being fans of Craig David. It's like we don't want to alienate our crowd, you know, our viewers. But if you're not a Craig David fan, I think we wouldn't get on. Fact. Duelco low. Oh, the crowd love that. Got right behind there. South African prop. He would have felt the force of the crowd behind him. Lovely offloading. It was Eurovisius who did that. Now it's Marla. They're loving the big drives, but the little man Kerr tries to go underneath. Line up. Kerr again. Gloucester hanging on Smith. There is an extra man here. Jones has seen it. Here it is. Marley. Always coming, wasn't it? Always, always coming. Every carry heavy, every carry making ground. Heavy work up the middle just brings that Gloucester defence in. And there's players running in unopposed out wide. Same formula, Gloucester rough, know roughly what's coming. Very, very difficult to stop it. So, Harlequins, comeback victory, we've been here before. But what makes it happen? Usually one of their key players steps up. This week it is Joe Marchant for this week's take. We see this try here. Choreograph. They know they've got penalty advantage. They work on this in training. You can see him here just creeping forwards. He almost doesn't need to tell Danny Kerr. Danny knows to put it in that exact spot where Gloucester can't have a sweeper so close to their try line. It's an easy, it's a great pickup actually. It's not an easy pickup. It's great. It's lovely work rate. It's lovely awareness of where he needs to be. He's all action. And this wasn't all he did. The two tries were crucial. He could have had a third. Joe Marchant is a key player. And when Harlequins need somebody to pull them back from the jaws of defeat, Normally one of their guys step up. This time it was marching. Quinn's tops are they're such a they're a wonderful team. They're great because they give us a lot, you know, a lot to talk about. But they're such an odd team. They just don't seem to mind being a lot of points behind really at any point during the game. And at half time, there are lads walking off smiling and they're 24-7 down, I think it was, and they came out and blitzed Gloucester in the second half. So what is it? How can they do that? It's an incredible amount of belief and confidence, mm. isn't it? Probably born from last year. So you get that premiership victory, it cements that you know that at some point you're going to get the other team. You don't need to change too much tactically, too much inherently, your DNA. Ultimately, your style of rugby will win against any other team you come up against. And that was very evident because Gloucester were very good in that opening half. Very, very good. But like you say, you were there commentating with ITV. Second half, they only looked like being one winner. Rips. Crouch! Rips. Bind! Penalty goes to Bath. You're all down on your knees. Five from five for Orlando Bailey this afternoon. Bath back into the lead by three. Just need to retain it now. One more second. Ben Spencer sends it back. Orlando Bailey wakes it over the stands. Bath secure victory by three points in the red. Final score, Bath 27, London Irish 24. So Bath Rugby, Topsy, coming off the back of, in their last Premiership game, shipping 64 points to Gloucester, playing against London Irish, who haven't been brilliant this season at winning games of rugby, but have been brilliant at scoring lots and lots of points and lots and lots of tries. So this could have got messy for Bath, but actually they played really well managed to fight back and get themselves the win and actually did some really nice bits. Yeah, and that was a big thing, you know, it was a nervous start. Irish came out the blocks really fast, scored some nice tries, and for Bath fans probably thinking, oh, here we go again, last home game, it's going to finish in defeat. But credit to Bath, you know, they dug in, 
scored two quick tries, which really changed the momentum of the game. The Falatau break for Spencer, and as you said, the Max Clark kick for Will Muir. Really, really good finishes, and then dug in deep at the end to get that match-winning kick, Orlando Bailey. So, yeah, good a good, kick, yeah, yeah, really good kick. They've got good young talent there, so there is something to build on going forwards. Nice for them to sign off at home with a good win. For London Irish, a nervous wait now to see if Tigers can do them a favour mm. and beat Wasps to help them get into the Champions Cup. Yeah, it's all very mathy, isn't it? Very yeah, mathematically. Yeah. Still on it, don't worry. Calculator yeah, is. is in there somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Right, there's one more three o'clock kickoff from Saturday to cover. That's Newcastle against Leicester. Newcastle are out of the race. Leicester already guaranteed a home semi final. Ball to floor here. Ball is on the floor. They will have to play. Under advantage. It. Pick and go again. Pick and go one more time. Looks as though it's very close. Ball out wide. Oh, what a stack from Porter. because of the ascendancy up front. And Guy Porter applies the finishing touches. Right, time for the last game of the weekend. It's Sarries against Saints at the Stonex. If Sarries win, they guarantee a home semi-final. And Topsy, what did Northampton want from this? Northampton knew after the Gloucester game, them getting no points at Twickenham. A bonus point win in this game would guarantee them that fourth spot in the playoffs. So huge prize at stake. Yeah, with games won, that would have got them through. Right, yeah. got you, but not easy at Sarries, is it? And just to put all of this wonderful mathematical permutation filled Gallagher Premiership climax into perspective, we love all that. We love it. Isn't it wonderful to see the Saracens players walking out to play such a big game, holding the hands of Ukrainian refugees? Wonderful, wonderful stuff. <laughs> No hands now! Farrell dabs it through, signal first, Alex Good races forwards and then skips around the edge. <laughs> Champagne at the Stonex. The telepathy between 10 and 15. Immaculate. Tops, the final score makes it seem like the game was a bit closer than it actually was, because when the heat was on, Sarries really brought it, didn't they? Really, they really turned up the volume in that sort of, there's a 10 or 15 minute period, wasn't there? Yeah, it's what they can do sometimes. You know, the first half didn't go all their own way. You know, Saints played really well. They probably knew that they needed that bonus point win to get the job done for the playoffs. But Saracens, their ability to readjust at halftime, to come out with a different game plan, come out the blocks, incredible stuff. Blue Saints away in that period, you know, and stretch the lead out to 23 points going into the last 10 minutes. So at the end, it looks close, but actually the damage was completely done. Some players playing really well. Farrell's getting better every week. Yeah. Tompkins is incredible, pushing Esther Hazen for the best so 12. He's so powerful, isn't he? So yeah. powerful for not a huge guy, but powerful in such a small package. Mm. But in and amongst all of that, Theo McFarland gets yeah. better and better yeah. every single week. That, that is an finish. incredible finish. Any winger would have been proud of yeah. that. It was a 1v1, him and Proctor, who could do it better. I'll probably give it McFarlane, the bigger man. Just a bit more difficult. Longer arms, mind. Made yeah, it okay. look very, yeah. very easy. And Saracen's getting better every week. Full steam ahead for the playoffs. Northampton Saints didn't quite get the job done at the Stonex, but geez, they play some amazing stuff. That line from Freeman, the try through the middle, split through the pass from Mikey Hayward. Outrageous pass. That's a great pass for an international 12, let alone a hooker. They do play some great stuff, so if they make a semi-final, it's almost guaranteed to be great to watch, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be fantastic, you know, and Saints have been such a good team to watch. You talk about the skill, I think the work Chris Boyd, Phil Dowson going forward has done on their skill set. So 1-15, to 15, their ability to handle the ball means we get tries like the ones we've just seen. Some fantastic stuff. They are an all-out attack inside, yep. and they will cause any team problems if they get into the playoffs. So excited to see what happens now in this last round of the season. Yeah, just can't wait to watch Saints every weekend at the moment. Brilliant fun. They did get two points in this game at the Stonex. Let's see what those two points got them. Well, what it got them was a tiny march ahead of Gloucester going into the final round of the season. Puts them on 70 points now, and it's a straight shootout between those two. Leicester Tigers and Saracens will battle out for first and seconds. Harlequins guaranteed third. And the fixtures around 26, all at the same time, all Saturday, 4th of June at 3 o'clock kickoffs. Give no one that advantage of knowing what they <laughs> yeah, have to do. Nice, tops. Very nice. You've got Chiefs against Quinns, Gloucester against Saris, and Leicester against Wasps. Saints against Newcastle, you'd imagine, especially going in with a two point buffer over Gloucester, that Saints will get that job done and book themselves a spot in the semis. And it's Sale against Bristol and Worcester against Bath. <laughs> Right, well done, Professor Ojo. Uh, very good uh, mathematicals. Uh, prediction, we know Leicester, we know Saris, we know Quinns. Prediction for four spot, please. Saints. Got to be. Can't look past Saints. They've got the two-point buffer. They're at home. 
you would back themselves to win. They know it's all in their hands, completely in their yeah. hands. So go out and get the result. Go and get the job done. Reckon they will too. That means we could have Leicester Northampton in one semi final, East Midlands tasty, Derby, which is tasty. tasty. Northampton bang in form. Great stuff. Can't wait for that. And Saracens against Harlequins. Now, nobody wants to play Saris in a knockout game and nobody wants to play Quinns in a knockout game. But both of those teams potentially going to have to do just that. So lots to look forward to. Lots and lots of drama coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, before we sign off, we're going to go and have a look at your grassroots butte. This time, this week, it's Shelford Rugby Club against Leighton Buzzard. Nicely painted fencing at Davy Field, but that Leighton Buzzard line out overthrown. And this is the Shelford hooker, Miles Huppets. Milo, the Cambridge Blue. Veteran skipper Charlie Baker, the scrum half to uh, Will Buchanan drives it on. Baker again to fly half. Harvey Taylor still only 17 on his debut. On the stretch, it's Tom James. And now Jack Beard, the top try scorer this season. And this is Mike Gillick, the fullback. The man they call Mullet Mike. The inflatable dinosaur can only watch. Oh! Right, so we're lucky tops of the moment. So this season has produced loads of amazing score lines, zillions of tries, some brilliant spectacles to watch. Luckily for us, we've got lots of action to talk about at the top of the table. Going into the final round of games, round 26 in a couple of weeks, we've, got, we've still got more than one team that could make the playoffs. There's still multiple teams in the fight and all that stuff for European Champions Cup qualification. Uh, but there is part of me that thinks, well, this season, the quality of it, the amazing games we've seen, the massive score lines justifies the <clears throat> sort of the ring fencing, the removal of relegation because, well, you know, we, we've seen some great games, so it works. But I just, there's part of me that just can't help thinking that when you're looking, you're watching, you know, you're watching Bath against London Irish this weekend, or you're watching, you know, you've got Bath, Worcester and Newcastle right down there fighting and you're watching Newcastle, Leicester. There's so much more on those games if one of those teams is going down. And we don't wish relegation on anybody. It's horrific, um, I'd imagine. Never went there myself. Um, never even got close from memory. Uh, right, but, rub it in, rub it in. Yeah, Slide rub it. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but, you, but I just feel like we have got loads of drama at the top and no drama at the bottom. Bath, having their worst season ever you know, as a professional team, has become a story. So they've lost lots and lots of games, some by massive margins. But the story is they aren't as good as they should be. There's not actually any real risk other than yeah, yeah. sporting pride. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I'm with you. And I think that is a story that has kind of been apparent through the year. But then as we've got to this business end, it's almost been like, well, there's no relegation. So we don't actually need to talk about what's going on beneath like 9th, 10th, 11th. And that's been really interesting because you look at Bath's story, you think, right, OK, at one point Bristol were in that mix as well. Things looking a bit cagey for them. Sale before Christmas were right down there in that mix as well. So it begs the question, obviously, should relegation be back? I, I think long term it will come back. It needs to come back because it adds that jeopardy, it adds that drama. Yeah. It's a horrible thing to go through, experienced it, and it is a terrible, terrible thing to go through. But, but I'm glad you went through it. No, it, it made you stronger, right? Yeah, I think so. Isn't that the Maybe. thing? Adversity makes you strong. But yeah. actually, it does give you an appreciation for, I guess, the rugby sphere outside of the Premiership, what they're going through, the highs, the lows, the struggles, and what there needs to be in terms for the game as a whole to survive. And I think, like you say, we've been blessed in that the quality of the rugby this season has said, right, OK, having the Premiership ring fence for this time through COVID and all of that has been massively to the benefit of the game. Seeing some wonderful rugby being played, some wonderful tries, some great scores, some wonderful young talent being blooded because of the necessity in that, right, you guys have got to go out and play. And I think we'll see even more of that next season with the reduction in the salary cap. These young guys mm -hmm. are going to need to play more, more responsibility, more expo exposure, sorry, but hopefully better growth, better experience. That being said, I think at some point we now need to look below and say, right, OK, what needs to be done? Because going into this weekend, again, it's been the uh, next round coming up, sorry. Great that the top four race has been so close. The top mm. eight race has been so close. Imagine like the Premier League football if it was top and bottom. Yep. Going into this last round, three teams scrapping it out for Premiership survival. Teams at the top scrapping it for the main prize. It would be a beautiful story, beautiful advert. And then you've got the team below, which would have been Ealing this season, saying, right, we are right here. Who's coming down to take our place? So I, I think at some point that discussion has and will come back on the table. It's been to the benefit of the Premiership so far, but I think long term it needs to be back on this. Look over the pond at France and what they've now built with mm. two, now three competitive leagues up and down with huge TV deals as well. So they've got the elements in that mean that yeah. relegation isn't the end of the world. You can still bounce back even stronger and be a really strong, successful team, both on the pitch and off the pitch. So I think we are 
trying to now get to a certain level whereby at the moment not many clubs are making money. Yeah. So how do we generate a product that is great to watch week in, week out, that has the jeopardy at the top and the bottom, but is still financially viable as a business? And I think if we can get to that, including relegation and promotion, whereby both the Premiership and the Championship and BLO and beyond is included, we'll be in a really good spot. I'm with you. I mean, it's probably better TV, better content if we disagree, but I think we agree okay. on this Pro one. relegation. Don't yeah. want relegation. Pro relegation. Been through it, hate <laughs> it. There we go. Whatever we've just yeah. said, ignore Absolutely right decision. Thank you very much.